In case you didn't know, Portugal had less influence in Africa than it should be. Despite it being among the first nations which stepped in Africa from outside, unfortunately it went to fight a place where there were people who were more powerful to resist against Portugal. Let's talk today about the Kingdom of Congo. The influence Portuguese could have in Africa should have been more bigger than how it is today, seeing that only six countries in Africa actually speak Portuguese. So how did the Kingdom of Congo block Portugal? The Kingdom of Congo was a very powerful kingdom around the actual place which can be considered as the northern side of Angola, the western side of Democratic Republic of Congo, the part of Republic of Congo and the southern west side of Gabon. They used to speak the language called called Kikongo. According to history, this place was in contact with the European and the outside world even before the Portuguese coming and they were trading many things as ivory, raffia cloth, ferrous metal goods, pottery and many other natural resources meaning trading between this kingdom of Congo with the outside world was there even before the Portuguese coming. So Diego Cao came first and he was among the first people who explored or went deep into exploring the kingdom of Congo. And after exploring Congo, he went back to Portugal and presented to his government how he found the Kingdom of Congo very rich and a good opportunity for them. Later on, he was sent back to Congo with religious priests and soldiers from Portugal. This introduced the arrival of the Catholic Church in the Kingdom of Congo and because of the good relationship which the Portugal had with leaders of the Kingdom of Congo at that time, the king was baptized into the Catholic Church, changed his name to Joao I, but later on he came back to his original religion. Anyway, this didn't stop the religion of Christianity or the Catholic Church to continue to grow in the Kingdom of Congo because the successor of Joao I became also a Christian and made. So how did the Kingdom of Congo resist against Portuguese invasion. Everything was smooth and collaboration was very well between the Kingdom of Congo and Portuguese until a time when some of the agreements which they had about trading slaves started not going as it was supposed to be. And Alfonso I, realizing that, wrote a letter to Vatican and the Portuguese king in 1529, but they refused to cooperate with him to stop this trade of slave in the Kingdom of Congo. In 1622, there was a battle called the Battle of Mbumbi, which opposed Portuguese to the people from Congo. They chased away the Portuguese people who were trying to invade the Kingdom of Congo. In 1623, the Battle of Mbandankasi, which opposed the Portuguese who were occupying the part of Angola with people of the Kingdom of Congo. In 1665, Portuguese fought again against the Kingdom of Congo and they decapitated Antonio I. In 1670, there was again a battle called the Battle of Kitombo. I'm giving this just to explain that there were so many battles which were against the people of the Kingdom of Congo with the Portuguese powers. And just imagine how the Portuguese power are portrayed to be so huge but they were fighting against an African power and the African power could resist against their occupation even if after some time they were failing. So the Kingdom of Congo was reunited again in 1709 and so many other battles happened until in 1885 when Europeans divided Africa. The title of a king was abolished until it came back in 1915 to 1975 which was just a title but without power. And today since these things have been revealed to us, we can clearly see that we had very powerful kingdoms which were able to trade and to do so many things until the invasion came into Africa. If you would like the world to know about how powerful Africa was and to know about the Kingdom of Congo, please share this video and let's share Africa to the world.